The Chandrayaan 2 lander Vikram is not broken and uh, did have a hard landing very close to the planned landing site as per the images sent by the onboard camera of the orbiter. Chandrayaan 2's lander Vikram has been found on the moon's surface and efforts are still being made to re-establish communication with the module. This is according to the latest statement by ISRO. Let's go across to my colleague Imran Khan uh, in Bangalore. Uh, Imran, still hope there and uh, ISRO still believes there's a realistic chance of uh, re-establishing communication with Vikram, the lander, uh, and uh, the ISRO scientists and mission control has still not given up on that. Well, absolutely, uh, Athar, as they say, Umid Pai Dunya Kaim has. So, there is a lot of efforts being put on by the ISRO scientists here to have a communication with Vikram Lander. What is the good news is that they found the location of the where the Vikram Lander is, and also they found that uh, most of the Vikram of, uh, on surface of it looks very much intact. They're looking at what are the damages could have been done to the internal software and other uh, areas, especially the antenna, because it's in tilted. Uh, the direction of the antenna decides the how much longer it will take for it to have communication with the Vikram lander because it needs to be in orbit uh, the antenna should be in, uh, in in line with the orbit so that it can pick it up the orbiter so that uh, it transmits the uh, signals now that is the challenging part of the isro but uh, they are saying that they have done uh, they're all doing all the best so that they can have a communication with the Vikram lander there are some challenges and difficulties but uh, they are hopeful that uh, within a short period of time uh, they could be uh, uh, you know they could establish communication with the Vikram lander and uh, as uh, they have said that within the next 14 days they will be making their efforts to make that communication communication if that happened well and good otherwise there we can hear a final uh, 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 from the uh, isro's uh, calling of uh, the, uh, the saying that they're unable to establish contact with vikram lander but at the moment they are all hopeful that uh, there is more than 60% chances of having that communication they also give example of earlier experiences where for at least 10 days there were no contact with the uh, you know uh, communication with other landers like this but after 10 years after 10 days the, the communication was uh, reinstated so this could also be a possibility they are hopeful that they will also make contact with the uh, communication contact with the Vikram lander. But what whether it will happen or not, we need to see. All fingers are crossed at this moment. Uh, many of the Indians are praying that the communication happens and ISRO scientists are making their, all their efforts to make that happen. Well, it's a very interesting mix of optimism as well as realism uh, that the ISRO and mission control uh, is approaching uh, it with right now. There's also already talk uh, of a, perhaps a joint mission with the Japanese space exploration company as well, I believe. Uh, talks uh, and a feasibility study has already been done. So clearly, ISRO is taking this as a minor setback, uh, not really a failure. Well, absolutely, Arthur. As they say that in scientific uh, terms, that every step is a is a learning. So uh, that this, this all these experiences will count them, especially when they land the rover with the Japanese space agency, where ISRO along with the uh, Japanese agency is landing the rover there, and especially for the biggest uh, uh, exploration of the man on moon uh, space, that will be also all this thing would be learning. But not to forget that the orbiter is still in the uh, Chandrayaan two will be orbiting for at least seven years. That will also pick up lot of the information and scientific and data for them to analyze and which could help be beneficial for the next uh, ISRO missions and the chief, chief chairman Shivan has, has already said that it is 95% success of the mission so far and uh, because whatever they wanted to achieve as far as this uh, objectives of the mission were there they were successful and they have 95% successful in so far whatever they have uh, set out to do about with Chandra and 2 it is about picking up a little more details about especially about the water studying the geography and topography of that space which will needed a rover to go on that will be a little setback but that will happen when they launch that rover with Japanese space agency so there is a lot of learning and picking up steps from what they have launched in Chandrayaan 2 but of course all will be uh, helpful and there will be a little joy among all of across India and not just the scientific community right. if they also make that communication with Vikram Lander and hopefully if they can uh, launch that rover uh, uh, Pragyan and that will be nothing like it all right, stay on, uh, Imran. We have callers on the line right now. Our first caller on the show is Sudhir. Sudhir, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, looking at uh, the present situation, we feel that uh, um, the way our scientists have worked, we are very confident that they would be able to establish the communication with the lander. And all our good wishes, I think it's from all of India, not only me. We are all praying for that, keeping our fingers crossed. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Thank you for joining us, Sudhir. Krishnamurti from Palakkar is our next caller. Mr. Krishnamurti, please go ahead. Yes. 
sir. I am calling from my Palakkad. Okay, actually, we are having the arbiter, but from the arbiter, whether we can be able to contact this uh, Vikram to, uh, by sending message to the arbiter, from that it can be reflected and uh, it will go to the Vikram. So this is the way we can connect. Uh, that is probably that's what I am thinking, sir. All right, uh, Krishnamurti, thank you for calling in. Uh, we have more callers on the line right now. Uh, we'll go across now to uh, the other callers. Sandhya is our next caller. Sandhya, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm, uh, first of all, I would just like to wish the uh, scientists a, very, I mean, a big congratulations with the kind of efforts they've put in. And we all Indians are looking forward to the communications to be established. And I'm sure it would be done because if the uh, lander is in a, even if it's in a tilted position, still uh, we still have hope. Miracles do happen. All right. Thank you for calling in, Sandhya. Vedam Narasimha is a scientist. is also on the phone line. Miss Narasimha, uh, clearly uh, there is some hope still uh, for re-establishing contact with the Vikram. We now know where exactly it is. It's about a 500 kilometer radius where the original planned site was. It's also uh, known now that it's tilted but not that damaged. The extent of the damage uh, hasn't uh, really been given out yet. Uh, but realistically, do you believe that it's still uh, a, a realistic chance really of uh, re-establishing contact with the lander? Well, I think uh, there may be chances, but at the present time, you know, you have to analyze these things in uh, great detail. Uh, otherwise, it's not, uh, not easy to come to a quick decision. The main point is this. Uh, I don't know whether any new information has arrived during the day, but as I knew it uh, yesterday night and uh, this morning in the newspapers, we now know that uh, the lander did not follow its path. Actually, I knew that even uh, you know on the on the occasion on the early morning uh, when, when I was also there. But uh, there was a tendency at that time to think that it was basically a failure in communication. Hmm. Well, a failure in communication. In the vehicle's path. On the other hand, a change in the vehicle's path, and, uh, especially if it falls down, the communication can fail. So I, in fact, made that statement there that um, uh, we must not ignore the possibility that actually the vehicle itself has fallen. Now, I don't know exactly how it's going to be set right because uh, the, nobody is going to be able to land there <laughs> for a long time. Right. And from the orbiter, you will, of course, get some information about its position and maybe even about uh, exactly in what configuration. Uh, explain to me, uh, Mr. Narasimhan, uh, apologies for cutting you off. Explain to us and our viewers why that 14-day window is so important. Uh, we've seen reports that suggest that uh, post those 14 days, the chances of re-establishing contact become bleaker. Why exactly is that? Well, that's because, you see, if we... Well, first of all, how are you going to restore communication to a vehicle which has actually fallen down mm. on the ground there? Uh, you can't you can't go and uh, put in any new uh, units or uh, you know, circuits and so on, or take a substitute there. So I think that um, well, I, I know that they're trying, right? But I think that while uh, that that may be possible, but I would consider that that is a small chance. All right, uh, a, ch a chance yeah. nonetheless, yeah. however uh, a slight it may be. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Rodham Narasimha. We also have uh, an astrophysicist, Mr. Abhijit Shawra, on the line. Uh, Abhijit, if I could ask you right now, there is some good news. Uh, it's a realistic chance, really. How realistic is the chance of re-establishing contact with the Vikram now that we know that it's in a tilted position, but uh, the damage to it is not that extensive. The extent of the damage exists exactly has not been made public yet, uh, but do you still believe there is a better than 50% chance of re-establishing contact? Would that be a realistic assumption at this point? What, what we know so far is that the lander is in one piece. We have been able to ascertain that. We know where the lander is, and we know that it seems to be tilted in a certain direction. Right. Now, whether we can re-establish contact or not is 
is not known right now. ISRO will do whatever they can in the next 12 days or so, lunar day last. Because once the lunar day is over, the place will become very cold, like minus 183 degrees centigrade. And then it will be not possible to restore the lander to life in the next 14 days. So that's what ISRO will do in the short term. So let's be optimistic. It may be possible. If any sort of communication can be established, it will be a great thing. Uh, but in the long term, we want to... Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Yes, yes, go ahead, sir. And in the long term, what ISO will want to do is they will want to replicate the entire step-by-step -step process of what happened after the lander was around 2.1 kilometers above the surface until it touched down on the surface because that is what we don't know right now. And we want to ascertain what happened meter by meter, second by second, so that we can reconstruct this sequence of events. No, I, know it's, I know it's early now, Mr. Chavra, but uh, also there has been some talk, a, a lot of reports that I read about it was about uh, what, apps, what perhaps you could do differently the next time. Uh, it is to do uh, specifically with the propulsion system. We used chemical propulsion uh, this time around. Would electric be a better option? Yes, these are things that we need to consider very seriously because these are the lessons that need to be incorporated in the future missions like Chandrayaan 3 and Mars Orbiter Mission 2. So these factors will be decided once we get all the data in our hands and see what went wrong with the last two kilometers of the descent. Uh, and, and how soon can that be? Uh, knowing uh, that we, what we know right now, Mr. Chavra, that the ISRO scientists, mission control, everyone associated with this particular project is working overtime, day and night, uh, burning the midnight oil, if you will, to find out exactly what went down in those uh, last few moments before it crash landed or had a hard landing. Yeah, how long can that take, uh, uh, you know, usually in, in, a, in a mission with a magnitude of a mission like Chandrayaan 2? Well, we need to take our time because we need to have every single piece of data available. Right. right now, we have the data of the telemetry that we had. And then the satellite, the orbiter, which is around in orbit around the moon, will look at the landing site in, in different frequencies, using the spectro spectrometers, using the optical camera, and we will need every single information piece right. of data that we can. All right, and let's hope for the best. Time to find out. Let's hope for the best. Abhiji Chavra, thank you for joining us. Two more callers on the line right now from Sonipat. Saurabh is our next caller. Saurabh, go ahead, please. Uh, hello. Yes, Saurabh. Uh, I'm Saurav Chandram from Sonipat, Haryana, and sir, I, I want to say this news is so optimistic and so satisfactory that we have actually, uh, I don't know what other people are saying, but for me, uh, actually, we have officially touched the moon. This, uh, by this news, this is proof that India has officially touched the moon, although there are some technical problems there, but we can evidently say that we are on the moon now. All right. Uh, thank you Thanks for joining sir. us, uh, Saurabh from Sonipat. Subramaniam is our next caller from Bangalore. Go ahead, Subramaniam. Hi, uh, Subramaniam from Bangalore here. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, I think this is great news. I think the news that Vikram is intact and had made only a hard landing, hard landing itself is a very great news. Uh, I've been hearing different experts talking about whether communication link could be established and the chances are very less. So be it if it, we couldn't establish, but I think this is more than half the job done. In fact, I was so disappointed that night after waking up and watching this thing that I got so, so disheartened that the next day I decided to go and see a good landing and that I, I went to visit. I went and saw the movie Mission Mangal, which I had missed out. And I came out so satisfied after seeing a great movie. At least I know I could live the dream of seeing a landing. All right. Thank, uh, you. thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Subramaniam. We have one more caller on the line right now from Bangalore again, Kashyap. Mr. Kashyap, go ahead, please. You see, uh, I'm hopeful if it is due to the magnetic storm because uh, the blink class may be due to uh, ESD, electrostatic discharge, uh, that is a magnetic field uh, because of uh, moons, uh, it's known that there are magnetic storms in moon. If that intensity comes down, there's a good chance that the link may be established. I mean, that's a, that's a thought. I'm not very sure about it because I'm not an uh, astrophysicist. All right, Mr. Okay. Kashyap, uh, thank you for joining us and giving us your views on this. Uh, as you can very clearly see, uh, there are many people, in fact, everyone who has seen uh, what uh, ISRO has done till now. ISRO itself has said more than 90 to 95 percent of uh, uh, the tasks really have been completed uh, in the Chandrayaan 2. The fact that uh, Vikram couldn't have a soft landing uh, is just a minor temporary uh, setback. Uh,